Hello, medical coding students. This is Janet Thompson, and I wanted to do another video. Hopefully, that's as concise as we can possibly make it with an additional review and lecture of the concepts we covered last Thursday in our very first medical coding class. And I will put this PowerPoint in our um, weekly lesson plan folder so he can access it. What I'd like for you to do right now. As we get started, I want you to get your ICD-10 book out and maybe um, be at a place where you can watch the video and have your book out in front of you at the same time so we can go through these pages and concepts together. So uh, with that being said, let's get started. Get your book out. And first things first, let's find the table of contents. And there's several areas that you'll need to be familiar with from this table of contents. It's going to tell you where you can locate the items that you need, the tools that you need. So I want you to locate the official guidelines for coding and reporting. And we're going to take a look at those pages. The index to diseases and injuries. The neoplasm table. The drug table. The external cause of injuries index. And then the tabular sections, which starts with the letter A and goes to the letter C. So you definitely, we're going to be using the index to diseases and injuries constantly. And then this week in class, we're going over the neoplasm table. So turning over into your book past the table of contents, you're going to come across a page that looks like this, ICD-10-CM, Official Guidelines for Coding and Reporting. And it starts with um, what the symbols are in ICD-10, what the punctuation means, what are excludes and includes notes. How do you work with seventh characters? Okay, turn over a page until you find section one, conventions, general coding guidelines, and chapter specific guidelines. So this is further a uh, breakdown of how you use the ICD-10 book. And you may need to pause this video as I'm going through these, these different areas. So just keep that in mind. You may wanna pause the video like right now, I said, we'll take a moment to find the Section 1 conventions and general coding guidelines. Maybe push your pause button and make sure you can turn to that into the book. And I want you to find where the chapter-specific coding guidelines start. So we start with Chapter 1, Infectious and Parasitic Diseases, and it's categories A through the end of B. And these are just uh, some examples of things we're going to be looking at this week. So we have um, directives for how you code HIV cases. What is the sequencing that's required? And then another uh, page over, we can find Chapter 2 guidelines. It starts at the bottom of the page for me. And this is for neoplasm. So we're looking at both of these next Thursday. Now, I will say my preferred way to access guidelines is through this electronic document that has the link right here. So um, I can pull this up actually right here. I'm already on it. And this gets updated every year. It's through the Center of Medicare and Medicaid Services. And this is exactly what you have in your book. And this is easier for me to teach from because I can really zoom in on this text. So everything that we just looked at in the pages can be found in this electronic document. So specifically, we'll be looking at this chapter specific coding guidelines, starting with HIV. And this is basically your directives. As coders, we are researchers. So we have to follow these guidelines for a reason. Um, it links certain conditions and ailments together so we can see what patterns may arise. And that's the, the whole business of medicine. We just keep growing. All right, so we're going to move on now to the alphabetic index of diseases and injuries. So there are different indexes. We start with the very first one, the alphabetic index to diseases of injuries. And please never code directly from this index. That's the first mistake a lot of new coders make. And um, that is never to be the practice. So don't get in the habit of coding just from this index. We always have to look the codes up. 
All right, so starting with our index to diseases and injuries, it starts with the letter A. And when we're looking at these ailments, we look at the specific name of what is wrong with the patient. Do they have a disease? Do they have a heart failure? So starting on the first page, we see aberrant. And then underneath of that, there's artery, so aberrant artery. And it gives us, uh, it says in parentheses, peripheral. And then it gives us the code Q27.8. And what we have to do then is look this up in the tabular list. We have to find the Q section and find where the specific code is at so we can read the code category and make sure there isn't anything else we need to do. So as we go through our tabular list, it's just an example. You start with the letter A. Your code ranges are here at the top where you can find your codes. And I'm just scrolling through the tabular list. Looks like I'm on chapter six here. And then this is the very end, um, starting with letter Z. So the ICD-10 book will almost always guide you to the correct code. If a code doesn't seem to match the physician's notes, just go back, keep looking, or doing internet research is gonna be a big part of the job and working with your physicians who, um, who make the, these diagnoses and document them is gonna be a big part of that job. ICD-10 codes are three to seven characters in length. So a three character code can sometimes be all you need. Sometimes you need it to be up to set the full seven characters. All right, so example, sometimes a three character code is all you need to report a condition. So example, J14, pneumonia due to hemophilus influenzae. Let's take a moment and I'd like for you to look up this code or go directly to this code in the tabular. So take a moment and turn to J14. And again, this may be where you wanna pause the video for a moment so you can get to your codes. And when we look up J14, it's a small category. We just have this right here. Pneumonia due to hemophilus influenzae. And then there's some notations there. Code first, associated influenza. Code also associated abscess. So the, the book is giving us directives on what we need to do. And believe it or not, that three category code, there's not an icon beside of it that says it needs a, a fifth digit, which is opposite of the code underneath of it. If we look at J15, it has a little circle beside of it that says it needs a fourth digit. So that means we have to come over here to the codes underneath of that category. We have J15.0 and J15.1, or if we go to J15.2, it needs a fifth digit. So we cannot just code J15.2, that's an incomplete code. It has to have uh, whatever the amount of numbers of codes is specified. So it's not optional. <laughs> In some cases, additional characters are required for reporting a more specific code, and this is not optional. We'll take an another look at another example, category L02. So take a moment in your book and turn to category L02. And hit your pause button if you need to. Once you turn to that category, it's a very long one. So we see some notations here, starting with L02. We have an icon beside of it that says it needs a fourth digit. I know you can't really read that all that great, but that little icon is there. So it needs a fourth digit. So we have to come to the categories underneath of it. It's either gonna be L02.0, L02.1, et cetera. If we go to L02.0, it says beside of that, we need a fifth digit. So these are the further codes of that category. So we need to pick one of those. And what this means is code L02 by itself is not correct. It always has to have a fourth or extra digit. And it's different from the first category that we looked at. That first one, that first three character code was all we needed. So this is why we have to get in the habit of looking through the tabular. Now category L02 continues on to the next page. This is a, um, looks like it is uh, at least two pages of information on this particular code. So um, that this is why we have to check the tabular. All right, another item is the placeholder character. 
So when a fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh character is required, but there's no previous characters, you will use X to hold your place. So on this example, we have T15.01XA, foreign body in the cornea, right eye. And when we go to look up this code, when we go to look up T15.01, for instance, we see here T15.01, foreign body and cornea, right eye. It needs a seventh character. Beside of the code T15.01, it needs a seventh character. And it ends after five. So T15.01, we can't just add an A to that. And then we have to go back to our, where our category originates, right up here, conveniently. And it tells us what appropriate seventh character we can add. So T15.01XA, that's how we use the placeholder character. So we get the most complete code. And there's also different seventh characters for different code categories, but we'll look at that as we go throughout this semester. Let's take a look at some other examples. So T47.5X2D and T88.6XXS. That's kind of hard to say. <laughs> uh, okay, so starting at T47.5X2, this already has an X in it, and that's completely fine. Um, you know, when we need to put a placeholder in there, we do. Sometimes it's already there. And what would, what would we have? T1, uh, T47.5X2. So it needs a seventh character. And I didn't grab a screenshot of this one, but what we would have to do is go back to the T47 category itself and see what is listed under the seventh characters. And our next one was T88.6XXS. So take a moment and turn to category T88 in your coding book. Hit pause on the video if you need to. We're going to turn to T88. And when you get to that category, there's lots of notations. It starts at the bottom of a column. So we need to go on further to the next page. The seventh characters go on to the top of the next page. And our code T88.6. Right here, we have anaphylactic reaction from an adverse effect of a drug. And we need it to go to a seventh character. There's only four characters here. There's nothing underneath of it. The next code that starts is T88.7. So from here, we have two placeholder Xs. So we can use as many as we need to to get us to a seventh character. But that's how this process is going to work. And let's look at another example. Uh, take a moment and go to code S64.00. So hit the pause for a moment if you need to and find code S64.00. And when you get to that code, it needs a seventh character also. So we add an X and we go back to our three character category of S64. We can add an A, D, or an S. Almost mo most of your encounters are going to be initial in this class. So our full code is going to be S64.00XA. So another example with our placeholder character. Okay, other notations we see when we look up codes that we'll see includes list terms and diagnosis that are also reported with the code uh, uh, or included with the code's description. So example F31 bipolar disorder includes manic depressive illness, psychosis, and reaction. So here's in our book. Let's take a moment and turn to code F31. Hit your pause button if you need to. And F31 has includes notes, excludes one, and excludes two notes. So when we see in our medical record, we may see bipolar disorder um, documented also as bipolar type one, manic depressive illness, psychosis. It's just giving you um, clarification that you are in the correct area for your code. 
Now, excludes one notations are codes that cannot be used on the same health claim form with the original code. So example F32 has excludes one for codes F31, F30, F33. And let's take a moment, let's um, pause the video and turn to code F32 in your book. And excludes one we see for F32 is bipolar disorder, manic episode, and recurrent depressive disorder. So what it's saying is the, the, those conditions that are in excludes one cannot exist at the same time as the conditions of F32. So major depressive disorder single episode cannot be billed or listed on the same claim form with a bipolar disorder code or a manic episode code or a manic, I'm sorry, recurrent depressive disorder code. So um, we have, we check these by going back to where the category originates, F32. So that's the habit we need to get into. Another example is J37.1. So take a moment if needed to pause the video so you can turn to this code, J37.1. It has excludes one and excludes two notes as well. And it has uh, up here at the top of the category for J37, several notations of when to use additional codes if they apply. So J37, we see um, use additional code to identify exposure to environmental tobacco smoke, um, exposure to tobacco smoke in the perinatal period, history of tobacco dependence. So it's giving you directives on what you need to look for in your medical rec record. And now let's go into excludes two notes. This is just a warning not to mistakenly use the code above when the code below is more accurate. So example F34.1, take a moment, pause the video if needed, turn to F34.1 in your tabular list. And this particular category just has one excludes two notes. If we go up and look at F34, there's no notes under that category. This actually comes from this F34.1, but we still have to get in the habit of looking at everything in our category carefully. And F34.1 excludes anxiety depression. So it's saying that this might be a, a more appropriate code to describe your ailment for your patient. That's all that is. So um, it's just the guidance. All right, let's do some coding. Let's look at some case studies. So to start, we have anemia due to or in chronic kidney disease stage three. And I kind of wrote out your steps here. Index of diseases and injuries, then look up anemia, then do two, and then chronic kidney disease. So to start, you need to go back to your index of diseases and injuries and look up the term anemia. So take a moment and pause this video if needed and give yourself a, a moment to look up the term anemia. So push pause if needed. Anemia is a large category. So after you locate your code, you want to, and this is probably on the next page over, find in your index where it says due to, and then underneath of due to, it will list chronic kidney disease. So take a moment and pause the video. You want to find for anemia, underneath of anemia, due to, and then chronic kidney disease to match what I have on my screen here. So take a moment and pause the video until you find the index. And when you look at the code, it tells you D63.1. So important, we cannot just use that code and take it as it is. We have to look it up in the tabular. So that's our next step. So now we are going to locate D63.1 in our tabular. So I'd like for you to pause the video and give yourself a moment to look up the code that I have on my screen. And once you find this code in your tabular, we see underneath of that code first, underlying chronic kidney disease from category N18. It's saying to code it first. So now our next step is we need to go to category N18. So pause the video momentarily and turn to category N18 in your tabular. 
In the scenario, we had stage three chronic kidney disease. So, our first code in this scenario, N18.3, and then our second code, D63.1, is anemia. That's the result of the chronic kidney disease. So that makes sense. We would list the chronic kidney disease first. Okay, let's go to our next coding scenario. Using additional codes, notations for when you need to use an additional code. So here we have sickle cell disease without crisis with fever. Turn to your index of diseases and injuries. And you want to specifically look up the term disease in your index. So take a moment and pause this video and look up disease in your index. And once you find disease, your next step is to find sickle cell. And for me, it starts on one of the first of my yellow lines here. So now take a moment, pause this video and look up sickle cell under disease and then find without crisis. So you want to look up disease, then sickle cell without crisis. And that gives us code D57.40. So now we look that up in our tabular list. So take a moment and pause this video. And I want you to look up D4, I'm sorry, D57.40. I have to look at it again. D57.40. So pause the video and look this up in your tabular. Okay, so when you look at this code, D57.40, we don't have to add any additional characters to it, but we do have one more step. We need to go back to where the code category begins at D57. So take a moment and turn back to D57, push pause if needed. There is a notation when you get to D57 that says, use additional code for any associated fever. R50.81. And in our code scenario, we do have sickle cell disease with fever. So now we go to category R50.81. So take a moment and pause the video if need be. Turn to code R50.81. And when you turn to that code, there's notations underneath of it, code first, underlying condition when a fever is present, such as leukemia, neutropenia, or sickle cell disease. So even though we were coding this as an additional code, it's telling us what we need to code first. So the book is going to include directives for us to code correctly. And then this is the coding for this scenario. Okay, let's look at a code also notation instructing you to include additional code on the claim if applicable. So here we have D70.1, a granulocytosis secondary to cancer chemotherapy. Has a note to also code the underlying neoplasm. Now neoplasm is a growth, it means new growth, that's basically what that means. Can be cancerous or non. And when we look up a granulocytosis, we are looking for something that says due to chemotherapy, which is right here. So take a moment in your index to diseases of injuries, look up a granulocytosis. So look up a granulocytosis, secondary or due to chemotherapy. Take a moment and pause the video if needed so you can locate this in the index. When you get to the index for agranulocytosis, it will say secondary here, and then drug-induced due to cytoreductive cancer, and then chemotherapy. 
So D70.1. Okay, now we go to our tabular list. So take a moment, pause this video, turn to category D70.1 in your tabular. So pause, we're going to find D70.1. When you get to that code, it has a notation, code also underlying neoplasm. So this is coding in addition. Your first code would still be D70.1. And in this scenario, it doesn't tell us what the neoplasm is, but I'm gonna save that for this week since that's part of our lesson. So we would need an additional code. And that makes sense. The cancer chemotherapy um, spawning this agranulocytosis is really it, that neoplasm has something to do with it, so it needs to be included. Um, also, there's notations for additional information to help you code correctly. So B95 to B97 is used frequently. And I have an example here. If you would pause the video and look up code N39.0, N39.0, And when you find the category N39.0, it notes there, use additional code B95 to B97 to identify the infectious agent. And then what we can do is turn directly to that category and it lists here, uh, we have streptococcus, staphylococcus, and enterococcus as cause of disease. The code for N39 is for a urinary tract infection. So that would have a pathogen to be responsible. So we wanna capture that. What pathogen is responsible? And then AND notations, the ICD-10 guidelines instruct when you have a code that says AND, you read this as AND OR, and that is particularly important. So let's turn to D14.31 in your tabular, pause the video, turn to D14.31. So we see there benign neoplasm of right bronchus and lung. So what this is telling, telling us here, and or, this could be benign neoplasm of the right bronchus and lung. It can be the bronchus and lung. It can be just the bronchus or just the lung. So that's an important notation. You'll see notations NEC or not elsewhere classified. Um, this means physician documented additional details that are just not included in ICD-10 yet and then other specified. So the example here is C46.1 Carposi, I'm sorry, Kaposi sarcoma. So uh, C46.1. And when we turn to this, take a moment, pause the video if needed, turn to C46.1. Let me check my recording here. I better be recording all this. <laughs> um, so Kaposi sarcoma of the soft tissue, if we look at the category C46, it also says code first, any HIV disease, because Kaposi sarcoma is exclusive to having HIV. It's one of the manifestations. And unspecified codes are not otherwise specified. We sometimes have to use these a lot. So example, A48.52 is other specified, let's say 848.52. Get my little boxy here. Uh, wound botulism. And it says non foodborne botulism NOS or not otherwise specified. And we have a code, use additional code for the associated wound. Well, that makes sense if it's wound botulism. And that's it. That's it for our review. So uh, the next thing I wanted to go over is how you can use this ICD 10 data website for the review and quiz assignments. And I'm going to do a separate video for that. Now we meet this Thursday, let's see, today's 26th. So August 29th, this Thursday at 9.30, we have class again in person, room 205 at Tech Drive, online in the online classroom or what's called Blackboard Collaborate. So um, we will be continuing with learning our first chapters, infectious diseases and neoplasms. Hope this review was helpful.